Welcome to PTV News. I'm Mike Giordano. And I'm Anae Rendon. About 7% of college students find themselves unemployed after graduation. Facing a job without assistance can be stressful. Luckily, a job fair was held on campus to help students prepare. Here's Rebecca Martellotti with more. I'm here at the Chile Center for Performing Arts, where LAU Post is hosting its annual internship and job fair. We have a, a lot of a wide range of companies from uh, financial to sales to insurance to healthcare. Uh, we have uh, nonprofit organizations as well. Um, some of them are technology companies. Some of them are uh, just general business. So you have a company called Grimway Farms, and they're actually they. Uh, I just found out they're the largest carrot grower in the country. Um, so they deal with distribution of foods. Uh, food. Uh, it's been great so far. I'm a graduating computer science major, so. Pretty much every company needs an IT team, so it's it's been pretty successful so far. I've talked to almost everyone. Uh, I'm really excited about the job fair because I had a lot of questions about the future, and I feel like this will help me a lot. I definitely think it's uh, beneficial to have a job fair because it gives people opportunities to go kind of talk to people firsthand and give their resumes and see kind of what the future could bring to them. There was even a raffle available for students to put in their resume and win prizes. So we are actually, I'm from Career Success, which is located in LAU Promise, and we're taking resumes. Uh, we have, obviously we encourage students to have resumes, to be a little bit more professional, a little bit more prepared, and we are going to um, raffle either two pad folios or a $100 gift card to Barnes & Noble. Well, career fairs uh, are just generally helpful. Just It, it gathers uh, a group of people in the same area with the same interests. So there's people who need to hire, and there's people who are looking for, for positions. Um, it's certainly beneficial to be on campus in this atmosphere. Uh, it, it's, it's great for us as a company to interview people. It, it'll be really easy because they'll come out of class and come right up to our offices. The LAU Post Job Fair provided the seniors with the opportunity to network with future employers. For PTV News, I'm Rebecca Martellotti. I actually went to the job fair today and handed my resume in to a few companies. Maybe I'll get some help after graduation. You definitely can help us pick that out next semester. <laughs> we definitely should because it's helpful. With almost 6 million Jewish deaths, Holocaust Remembrance Day is a day to honor the victims and survivors. LIU Post had the pleasure of having guest speaker Carl Shapiro to share his empowering stories. Here's Alexis Peters with more. LIU Post observed Holocaust Remembrance Day by inviting Carl Shapiro, a World War II refugee, to speak to students about his experience. Soldiers, and a man who is known to be a Holocaust denier wanted to come to the college and just have a conversation with the students who are the victims. And that was the wake up call for me. And my child was stopped in the seven years in the ghetto. The ghetto has no barbed wire, no fences, because of the need for the local population to make sure that. actually was hid by a, a brave and friendly uh, Polish family and they hid them, they, they created a 36-inch uh, high living quarters under their barn to help Carl Shapiro, a six-year-old boy, and his family and 17 others escape from the threat of the Nazi regime. He began talking about that when he, uh, when, when, when he was in his childhood at the age of six and um, when he uh, when he got to that part, um, my, I felt like my heart sank, and and uh, I feel, felt like my stomach flipped upside down because because um, uh, um, by the time he was six, everything changed and all the, and all the genocide was uh, was happening. People, students that I um, I was an actual eyewitness, a Holocaust survivor. I survived living in total silence for four 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 and a half years. I lost my childhood, and I never recovered it. Even after I came to this country, I was just busy studying and working, and I never learned to play games. I don't know how to do small talk with children. 
but I'm a responsible parent and citizen. Many people do not understand that um, why, what drives someone so far into killing into killing people. Right now, right now, Carl Shapiro, a brave a brave Jewish man, he's he's here right now. But the real but the real enemy is still out uh, is still out there. An enemy an enemy that is um an enemy that is trying to poison the hearts of others so that way they could seek only darkness. This enemy is called is called hatred. Carl Shapiro, he possesses he possesses a, a, a rival a rival to hatred, which is kindness and love. Not love only for himself and his family, but a love for all. Unfortunately, I didn't get to attend this event, from, but from what I heard, everybody who went, it was amazing. I actually did get to attend, and I think it's great the way he shared in his stories. And it always hit a mind student about the Holocaust era and how big of a history, a part of history it was. I agree. There's no dodging Greek Week. Many activities were organized by fraternities and sororities on campus, including dodgeball, Medal of Honor, and much more. Here's Sienna Garraway with more. As Greek Week comes to a close here at LAU Post, let's hear from some of the Greek community's favorite experiences. Greek Week is a series of events, sporting events, and different kinds of collaboration events, some community service efforts done by all the Greek members here on campus. I thought Greek Week was uh, a pretty good success. Uh, my favorite event was the Greek God and Goddess pageant, and I thought the skits were really creative, and I really liked some of the talents that the other Greeks put together for the skits. Greek week, we had three teams. We had France, Brazil, and India, and it was around the world. And we had all different um, Craniac games. We had creativity. We had sporting events. And my favorite game was dodgeball because it got very intense, and it really brought like the Greek community together and organizations talking that normally wouldn't. Greek week of this year was great. We had a lot of fun. We raised a lot of money for Relay for Life, and we also donated a lot of cans to the Mary Brendan Inn. And we got a chance to do a new event this year called Stack a Can, where teams were able to build uh, giant sculptures and things they wanted to build out of cans related to their team name. So one team was France, and they built a um, Eiffel Tower. Another team was India, and they built a serpent coming out of a basket. And the last team was Brazil, and they did the Brazilian flag. I would say there's a few favorites. I really love the Greek rock painting, because um, that really let the organization show their Greek pride. Um, the Greek god and goddess was really wonderful. Um, but I would think my favorite was the stack of can because they had a lot of fun but also did some community service and we donated 1,300 cans of food. This sums up Greek Week 2015 here at LIU Post. Be sure to check out Greek Week next spring and don't forget to go Greek. For PTV News, I'm Sienna Garraway. I couldn't attend any activities but I'm sure a lot of people had fun. You know, I should have gone to that dodgeball game to try to knock some people out a little. I actually got to go and it was so much fun. I had a blast. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go next year. Good. Approximately one third of all college students smoke on campus. And while this is allowed at LIU Post, should the school change its policy? Stay tuned to find out what students are thinking. Smoking is a controversial topic and has many students divided on whether it should be allowed on campus. Here's Michelle Masiello with students' opinions. So far in the United States, 1,500 college campuses have banned smoking. Should LIU Post be one of them? We went to the street to find out. Well, I don't really think it's that much of a big deal, but I guess I don't really particularly care for the people who hang right outside the doors of this building and smoke because it's kind sort of enclosed and then you have to walk through a whole bunch of smokers but if you're just hanging out outside at the base of the stairs I don't, I don't really care i know we're on campus technically but like you can't really tell someone that like if they want to smoke a cigarette they can't go stand outside whatever building they're in and smoke a cigarette or if they're walking to class no reason not to tell me not to smoke because you're not my parents so first of all it's like the school and i don't really care yeah i would still do it me personally I go with health reasons because every time I go past somebody who's smoking, my secondhand cough comes back. Sometimes every corner that I walk, there is someone smoking, and secondhand smoke is very dangerous, so it should 
maybe there can be some regulations to contain it on campus, but definitely not there now. I feel that it's not really much of a problem, um, but that is also because I do smoke here on campus also. Um, we do have regulations on this campus, though, that you cannot smoke within 15 feet of a building, of the entrance to a building. I think they should place the ashtrays in places that they would want people to smoke. Despite the differing opinions, LIU Post still remains a smoking campus. This is Michelle Masiello for PTV News. I don't have a problem with smoking on campus, whether it's students or professors. Just be cautious about where you're smoking because not everyone enjoys the smell. When you're passing by, students are trying to get a clash. No. I agree with you 100%. Although spring officially started a month ago, we are finally starting to see flowers bloom and the sun shine. Will we have more of this? Here's Tom Flusamer with this week's weather report. Today was a beautiful day here at the Post Campus, high of 72, low of 43. Going into the weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, will all be relatively cloudy days, expecting some rain Friday. High of 59 degrees Thursday, low of 47. High of 63 Friday, low of 49. High of 73 Saturday, low of 48. And high of 61 Sunday with a low of 45. For your PTV weather, I'm Tom Frusamer, signing off. It was gorgeous out today, it's the best weather we've had in a while, and I really hope it's like this for the next week. I agree, spring is my favorite season, and I can mm -hmm. finally go out in a blazer, some slacks, I don't have to have this big coat on with a scarf and hat. It's great. It's so nice. LIU Post had a successful week in baseball and softball with a combined six wins. Coming up, DeAndre Wilson has our first sports recap. In 2012, more than one-third of children and adolescents in the U.S. were overweight or obese. What are you doing? I'm on my phone. You should come and play basketball. Help us help your kids. Get out and play. Visit www.getoutandplay.org for more information. LIU Athletics had many victories this past week. The baseball, softball, lacrosse, and track seasons are all in full swing. DeAndre Wilson brings us with the latest in Pioneer Sports. It has been an interesting week as our Pioneers accumulated multiple wins in each sport. Starting off on the mound, the softball team wins four straight games, sweeping two series against the Golden Gallon Lions and the Bridgeport Knights. Catcher Allie Brzezinski was named Athlete of the Week as she swatted in her 49th career home run against Dallin giving her the all-time career home run list in program history. The baseball team also had a good week, winning two out of the three games in their series against the Golden Lions. Pitcher Dan Dagiello and Brandon Butler had an impressive performance, holding Dallin to only seven runs in two games. The Pioneers are currently on a two-game winning streak and have improved their conference record, putting them in second place. The women's lacrosse team beat UDC 20-2 and the men's team beat NYIT 12 to 10 in a heated rivalry called Battle of the Boulevard. Attack player Ryan Slane was also awarded Athlete of the Week, scoring three goals against NYIT, and one of the goals sealed the win with 16 seconds left on the clock. Lastly, we want to give recognition to track runner Dell McDonald, having a standout performance at the US MMA eight-weight meet, finishing in first place in three different events. That's your Pioneer Sports, and I'm DeAndre Wilson. I can't wait to see all these teams. They were great last season, and I hope that they can carry that momentum into this year. Yeah, um, I don't really attend sports, but I definitely should because they're dominating, and I should go see that mm -hmm. just to support sports. The gym attendance is at an all-time high during spring. The Pratt Center is mostly known for its gym and basketball court, but there is more you can utilize than most students know. Casey Connors is at Pratt to tell us more. The Pratt Recreation Center has a lot more to offer than just gym equipment. There's racquetball courts, basketball, volleyball, and even a swimming pool. This room that I'm in right now actually hosts different kind of classes like kickboxing, TRX, and yoga during the week at various times, free for all students. Uh, I attended uh, a yoga class. I've been taking the yoga classes pretty much uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, but that's when they are. Um, pretty much uh, ever since like the second half of the semester, so yeah. No, I think it's a pretty quality yoga class. And you would recommend this as a class to anyone? Yes, I do. I do recommend it. It's a very nice class. It's, you know, I feel really good afterwards, and uh, it's just 
Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5.30 at the Pratt. The instructor, she does, like, you know, sometimes, like, do, like, advanced things that, like, I can't do, but, like, you know, it's okay if you can't do it. Like, I, I, like, there's a lot of things that, like, if you can't do it, so I just don't have, like, the body strength to do it, so, yeah. So is it, like, a fun and relaxing environment? I think so, yeah. For PTV News, I'm Casey Connors. I'm definitely attending yoga this week because it's one of my favorite classes. Well, anyway, that's all we have for PTV News. I'm Anai Rendon. And I'm Mike Giordano. We'll see you next time.